Hi guys, Mitch here from Japanese Tools Australia with Greg, our carpenter in residence. And today, Greg, I wanted to ask you a question that I get a lot, and it's quite an important question. How do you make a straight cut with a Japanese saw? Yes, that's a good question, Mitch. And I think a lot of people, when they first use these saws, will notice that they'll go for a straight cut, they'll try to follow the line, and then about halfway through, they'll find that the cut is drifting either to the left or to the right. Uh, now, that's gonna happen because, you know, we're all different, we've got, a, we've got a dominant left or right arm and perhaps there's a little bit of a, a sort of curve in the blade. All sorts of factors contribute to that. So what we have to do is counter those factors. Right. And uh, there is a sort of set technique and process that mm -hmm. if you follow that, mm -hmm. you should get a good straight cut every single time. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that now mm -hmm. using the, uh, the cross cut side of the blade because yep. we're cutting across the grain. Yep. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is an establishing cut and I'm going to use my thumb as like a guide mm -hmm. and I'm going to take the blade using the lower portion and line it up next to the line. I'm going to try and keep the line for this cut. Mm -hmm. And then again, I'm keeping my posture so that the centre of my body is lined up with the cut line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm nice and steady and then I'm going to start off that cut. And just small strokes to begin with. All right, and there we've got the established cut. All right, mm -hmm. now the next step is to take this and we're going to extend it all the way across that top face mm -hmm. so that it's parallel with that line. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be a shallow cut. So mm -hmm. I'll start off here again and I'm just going to like lower the angle of the blade and keep it parallel to the line, always watching the line and keeping it shallow. All right, and then I'm slowly making my way to the other side and then I'm going to give a little establishing cut on the other side as well. Okay, and then I'm going to link those two up. All right. So there we have it. Right. That's the first cut ready to go. Mm -hmm. Now from here, I'm going to take the cut down the close side to me right. and then get, it out, get down to about halfway through the wood. Mm -hmm. So I'll roll it over and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to bring it from here down to here, yep. keeping it on the line. Starting off with small strokes and then slowly making them longer. It's really crucial that you take care in this phase of the process to get that just right. So, so getting this straight is going to make your cut straight? Yeah, get this one straight, you get this right, everything else should fall into place. So again, using my thumb as a guide, same principle as before, joining up the line to make a curve that goes all the way from one end of the piece to the other. Give that a little bit of depth and then bring it back to its original position. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna start sawing away. And now I don't have to really worry about the blade wandering because I've got these two kerfs on either side exactly where I want them. Mm -hmm. And that'll keep the blade in the correct position. Now, the other thing to remember here is there's no need to like press down on the saw at mm -hmm. all, all right? Really just let the weight of the saw do the work. Okay. A little bit of pressure, okay, but like some people have a, sort of tendency to want to really push down and that's no good. It's mm. just going to make the job a lot harder. Yep. If you just let the saw do its job, things will run a lot smoother. Okay. Um, the other thing to remember is that I'm only really using this sort of finger to sort of make the pull. Right. Uh, my wrist is relaxed, my shoulder's relaxed. Mm -hmm. I've got my line, my body lined up with the line of the cut. Mm -hmm. Hand to steady the piece. Mm -hmm. I'll be gripping it with these three fingers. Mm -hmm and my thumb, mm -hmm. and my index finger will kind of be like the guide. Right. That sort of dictates the, the sort of strength of the pull and things like that, mm -hmm. okay? So, got my good grip in place, mm -hmm. and then we'll get back into it.
So that's half the cut done. Mm -hmm. We've gone about halfway into the piece. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, we've kept that edge mm -hmm. exactly where we want it. So you've protected your line. We've protected the line, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we'll continue that the rest of the way around the piece. And again, it's the same thing. So let's go from the opposite side. Mm -hmm. We've already got a little establishing cut there from the, the previous cut. Mm -hmm. But we'll do the same thing on this corner. Bring the place. Using my thumb again as a guide, line up the saw, and then small cuts to begin with. So during this process, you're really cutting, only cutting a line you can see. That's right, yeah, yeah. Wow. And there it is. So, reasonably smooth cut, mm -hmm. but we've kept that line all the way around. Fantastic. Yeah. Most Australian woodworkers are making these sorts of cuts on a workbench. How do you do it in Japan? Well, they have a very different approach and uh, I think the only way to explain that is by showing you, so. Aha, so without a workbench. Here we are. So people often wonder how do Japanese woodworkers secure the material that they're working with? Because mm. clamps have never really featured in Japanese traditional carpentry. And the, uh, the solution to that problem is that you either use the weight of the material itself or you have your own body holding the material down. And that's probably why the workbench is never really featured highly in Japanese carpentry. Yeah. All right. Yep. So this is the standard setup that we would use when we're uh, building a house in Japan and mm -hmm. preparing all the timber. Yep. We've got a couple of saw horses and this could be a post or a, a beam. It's mm -hmm. about 100 by 100. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Imagine that this is actually four metres long. Right. The weight of it alone would hold it down and be enough to secure the piece. I don't need to worry about clamping it or anything like that. And I'm usually making all the cuts on either one end or another. And so all I have to do is have the end I'm working on protruding over the, the horse mm -hmm. and then I start cutting. So that's one option. The other way is if we're going to do a rip, mm -hmm. it'd just be a matter of me getting down low and starting to cut like this, right? Mm -hmm. That's all well and good when you're working with a big piece of material. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be working with something a lot shorter than this yep. and you won't be able to get it as secure as it would be if it was a four metre length. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll show you how a Japanese carpenter deals with that. Ah, this is new. Yes, so this is the most basic setup, but it gets used quite a bit and this is really the best way to rip wood. Right. So I've just got a block and I've stuck the piece on top and mm -hmm. I use my own body weight. Bit of balance. Need a bit of balance. And then you make the cut. And you don't really need to apply any pressure to the blade. But that posture allows you to really use your abdominal muscles to make the cut and makes it so much easier and less tiring than any other position. Cool. Mm. Awesome. And so that's about it. But I mean, if you're doing finer work like cabinetry and things like that, mm. traditionally a Japanese cabinet maker would have used a, a, a table on the ground, mm -hmm. like a shooting board, and they would have been sitting on a cushion and doing all their work on that, mm -hmm. and then using their legs to secure the pieces. So yeah, it's, uh, it's not necessary that you have a big workbench set up. There are alternative ways to use these, and these tools are made for really sort of you know, active use. Mm. 
mm -hmm. uh, in a non sort of uh, woodwork environment, I suppose to say, you know, right. I suppose you could say, you know, it's, uh, it's for working on site, work, it's versatility. So you don't need a full workshop to get the most out of these saws? Not at all. As long as you've got a few blocks of wood to rest your piece on and you've got a body mm -hmm. and your own body weight, yep. you can do everything that you could in a workshop. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you very much. No worries. Thank you.